Prior to launching a decisive charge, Custer ordered the band to strike up Gary Owen. Given Sitting Bull's renown as a composer and singer of songs, it is tempting to speculate on his reaction to the boisterous strains of Felix Vanicari's band. Having once sung of his own bravery and daring, he would have known exactly what Custer was attempting to accomplish as the notes of Gary Owen echoed up and down the valley of the Yellowstone. Nathaniel Philbrick, The Last Stand. It's a sad day in the city of Boston. Last night, New England came within a 48-yard field goal of winning their first Super Bowl, only to have the entire region watch in horror as kicker Chucky Watkins shanked the ball wide right. As everybody knows by now, St. Louis won in overtime. Watkins has reportedly gone into hiding after receiving death threats. You hate to see that kind of thing happen, Charlie. After all, it's only a football game. Shut up, Jim. Watkins was terrible throughout the playoffs and had no business being on the field with a championship on the line. I feel perfectly justified in making those threats. As postulated by Hugh Everett at Princeton University in 1957, and recently by string theory, there are parallel universes alternate realities which exist on other planes and in other dimensions and are different from the one that we perceive. As represented by this line, we'll call this real time. Quantum entanglement therefore means that something that happens in one reality may affect what happens in another. So if you believe this, and I personally think the scientific evidence is lacking, there's a reality in which, for example, Germany wins World War II. Another reality in which the bullets miss Kennedy in Dallas. And still another reality in which, heaven forbid, there's a uh, nuclear war. And if you believe- so, Professor Flaherty, there's a parallel universe where we won the Super Bowl last night. Theoretically speaking, yes. So, instead of that pathetic worm, Chucky Watkins, missing the field goal and us losing in overtime, we have a great kicker who makes a 48-yard field goal and wins it all for us? Well, where is this guy? Why isn't he on our team? Now, that's just it. We don't know. Maybe his great-great-grandfather got run over by a, a stagecoach, and our theoretical great kicker never came into existence. And there's a reality where New England never, ever, ever wins a championship. And we're in it. All right, folks. I can see we're not gonna get anywhere today. Go pack it up. Drown your sorrows. I know how you feel. I'll see you on Wednesday. Professor Wren, what brings you here? Hey, John, we're uh, headed down to Fogarty's a little bit later. Gonna have a beer, play a little jazz. Uh, I kinda need it after that fiasco last no, night. kidding. Didn't know if you wanted to sit in. My coronet's got a busted valve. I've been meaning to, to get it fixed. Well, then come by for a beer, then. Yeah, maybe I will. Okay. You know, I saw an antique coronet down at that curio shop on Mass Ave. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looked kind of, uh, I don't know, but it caught my eye. Antique. Yeah. Huh. Okay. I'll take a look. Play good. Come on, guy. 
guys. It's just a game. Yeah, a friend of mine said you had a cornet. She's a beauty. Seventh Cavalry Band. All killed at the Little Big Horn in 1876. General Custer brought a band into battle? Always. Had him play Gary Owen, the cavalry marching song. Well, the truth be known, it's an old Irish drinking song. Guess they should have stayed home that day. This belonged to Custer's bandmaster, Felix Venateri, Italian immigrant, volunteered for the Massachusetts 16th Regiment, ended up in the 7th Cavalry. This wasn't with him when he... Mm, creepy. They don't make them like this anymore. You play? Uh, a little. I'll make a good deal. Uh, I don't know. Go on, take it home, try it out. No, uh, no obligation. Uh, old brass, it's my weakness. There is a catch. A catch, cash up front, right? No. You can't play Gary Owen. What? You must promise me that you will not play Gary Owen, Custer's marching tune, on that horn. Do you not? Dun, 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 like you said, it's an old Irish drinking song. Why can't I play it? Not that I necessarily want to. Um, there's, there's a legend that a Lakota medicine man put Custer's spirit in that horn, trapped it between worlds forever. Someone plays its last music. Custa Spirit will be released. And the last music played on this horn was Gary Owen. Yes. <laughs> no Gary Owen? No problem. Nothing ventured, eh, General?
Ashanti! Mr. Vinatieri! Are you all right, sir? I need you to dismount the band and turn the horses over for remounts. But, uh, the band is uh, mounted and ready. But I need you here at the powder. God knows this is the first time that I'll lead the regiment into battle without our sabers or our band. But I don't want you or your that coronet, coronet on the, on the battlefield. battlefield. And when we come back in about a month, you can welcome a victorious seventh home with Gary Owen. Good luck, Sam. Thanks. We'll need it. St. Louis has tied the score with 17 in the final minutes of Super Bowl 36. That's weird. Two bullet wounds from two different guns. But no bullets, no casings, nothing. Hmm, that is weird. Listen now, whether we watch the end of the game or not, he's going to be just as dead. You're right. Kicker Adam Vinatieri is going to try to win it for New England with a 48-yard field goal. He's been money all year. New England fans have to feel lucky he's the one making this kick. You got that right. His great-great-grandfather almost went to the little bighorn with Custer. All right, the ball is snapped. The kick is up. It's on its way. 